I did that very successfully in 2020. Uh -huh. I was a beauty pageant contestant on 20, in 2020. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. My retirement was approved in 2020. Oh, wow. sure. And then um, I um, threw my hat in the ring for a... I saw a ad on Facebook in one of my transgender social groups about um, a... Um, a movie that was being filmed mm. about a transgender woman. Mm. Um, yeah. So um, I've noticed a lot of calls recently about that are getting asked, transgender talent. Yes, yeah, into I've transgender roles. Quite a few of them. Yeah. So, um, so the movie is called Knockout Blonde. Okay. It's about a transgender woman named Kelly Maloney. She li she was a famous boxing promoter in um, in Britain. And um, she signed Lennox Lewis and a couple other famous mm. boxers at the mm -hmm, time mm -hmm. in the, I want to say, 90s, early 2000s, maybe. And um, uh, she's since retired and lives in Portugal. But this movie is based on her life. And, oh, okay. a, and a lot of her life experiences kind of parallel my own in, in various ways, mm -hmm. from cross-dressing to self-discovery to trying to be a closeted cross-dresser and figuring out where to go and sure. who to talk to and stuff like that. And, uh, and just kind of slowly you know, growing and blooming into her own character. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I portray her. I was selected mm -hmm. oh. after a Zoom audition wow. to portray the lead character wow. in Knockout Blonde. That's so, a big deal. Um, yeah, it's Is a it huge deal. So it's actually, um, uh, uh, they've submitted it to, to a bunch of film festivals. It was, I just learned. Yeah, it's okay. Go ahead. I just learned last week uh, that this film not only was p picked up by Voices Rising Film Festival mm. in New York's in, in um, on Long Island uh, next month, but it will headline mm. the event. Wow! Uh, so, uh, so this this weekend I'm going to New York for a totally different thing. Yeah. But next month I'll be going to New York for a, a movie premiere. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you can read about it on IMDb. Um, the movie poster and the trailer are both out on social media as well. Yeah. And, um, well, I hope you should get some good press about that too, because headlining yeah. a big event, that's kind of a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the producer is all about promoting it and mm -hmm. getting the word out and advertising it. Uh, the director tagged me in several things on Facebook and, mm -hmm. and Instagram about its release in the movie poster and stuff like that. And yeah, it's my first, I've done some extra work in the past, but this yeah. is my first lead role yeah have you, know, you done any acting before yeah just extra work in the past just okay. like minor stuff yeah. um but this is my first this is i have an imdb page as a result of this casting okay, yeah. traveling to um providence rhode island to record it or to film it for mm -hmm. you know nine days i had a makeup artist and a personal yeah. assistant and a hairstylist and wow a, did you feel like fancy i like, did feel fancy yeah. yeah i had a wardrobe person and my wow. wardrobe person had a personal assistant it was it was wild yeah and um well, if you're the lead i mean you're the person yeah I was there every day, 12 hours a day. They, yeah. yeah, it was it was uh, definitely an immersive experience. Yeah. I went in as an amateur, and then I came out the other end being able to, like, shed tears on command. Oh. Yeah, so I definitely wow. developed as an actress mm. uh, during that during mm. that week. Have you taken acting courses before? I have not. Oh, okay. But I will as a result of this. So, yeah, yeah I, I would like to pivot my career in my retirement from uh, engineering to a more creative cosplay and acting sort of thing. Well, obviously, sort of thing. I mean, you're a very young re retiree, so, yeah. Yeah, you not can, that young. There's a lot of things that you can do. I'm older than I look. <laughs> okay. I think a lot of trans people are actually. Yeah. Um, so, well, I mean, it sounds like you you have just such a great opportunity to, to go on to something else. Uh, I mean, there there's a lot of, it seems like there's a lot of content out there, a lot of films that are being made where they're asking for trans people, which is great. I hope that doesn't change. I hope that trend continues. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Because I'm... We're kind of going into a little conservative phase right now, it seems like. I hope that doesn't change. So... Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would love to continue on with it, for sure. Yeah. 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 Speaking hopefully, of... Hopefully, Knockout Blonde will go to streaming yeah. after after the film festival as well. Yeah. But right now, they're, they're releasing it in film festivals oh, to probably... get some awards and things like that. And then they'll probably push it, it out to streaming. It probably will. Yeah, because so, yeah. uh, all those streaming platforms have like a, you know, uh, LGBT menu or something right. like that where you can look yeah. up LGBT films, definitely. And then, of course, there's other film festivals. Of course, yeah. They're festivals. happening all the time. So there's you... one here in Portsmouth that's pretty fantastic. Yeah, so you could be uh, traveling some more to other places like the West Coast. and Potentially, yeah. 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 Uh, the, it, it, the first time it's going to happen, like I said, is in L Long Island at the end of September. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely need to be there for that one. Um, I don't know if I'll have to be there for each one of them because I'm 
What's pretty the busy. Name of it, again? it is Knockout Blonde: The Kelly Maloney Story. Okay, and you can and find then, it on IMDb. You can and read then about the, it up there. The festival itself. The festival is the Voices Rising Festival okay. in All New right. York City, where it's going to be debuting on the thirtieth of okay. September. All right. So people could probably still buy tickets. Oh yeah, yeah. That. Tickets yeah. are still available. Uh, I had a um, a video chat with uh, a couple of people in New York yesterday, and I was talking about it, and they looked they looked up ticketing yeah. as we were talking. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, there's plenty of tickets. They're very affordable. Great. Um, Great. Yeah. Wonderful. So it should be it should be a really good time. I have not seen this movie, and I would love to see this movie. I cannot wait to <laughs> yeah. heckle myself from the sta- from the audience. It's gonna yeah, be great. I always wonder that. Get off the stage, you suck. I always no. <laughs> I always wonder that because like it seems like with filmmaking, there's so many specialists taking on various parts of it that it seems like actors only have control over just a, a small part of it. Uh, you know, like. And then there's the directors who choose what scenes, because I'm sure you do lots and lots of scenes that probably. Oh yeah, it was nine used. days of filming, twelve hours a day. Yeah, yeah. a lot yeah. of those scenes may not yeah. make the cut. Yeah, and um, then there's the editor's choices. Yeah. you know of of what to highlight and that sort of thing, and so uh, so it makes sense that you don't even know like what yeah. it's going to actually look like. Uh, yeah. The I, I learned from the trailer that it's going to be a a multi-part thing which tells okay. me it was either going to be like a three and a half hour movie sure, sure. or uh they couldn't cut it down any any smaller mm. so they cut it up into chunks so i mm. know for a fact it's going to be at least three three Interesting. parts okay great um which is a format that netflix enjoys yeah. if you notice sure, sure. um so i like a, like a i mini, don't know exactly where it's going to mini series yeah yeah, yeah yeah like a docudrama mini series yeah. like uh like a lot of the things that they have on yeah. netflix right right yeah, right. yeah. Potentially. Yeah, probably. And Hulu and all them. They, they love all that stuff. Yep. Wow. So I don't know exactly what streaming service it's going to go to at this yeah. time. But it could be any of those. So Yeah. yeah. Probably after the circuit through... Um, through the film festivals. Yeah, yeah. Through, through film festivals. Yeah. Because they kind of... Uh, they advertise things. Uh, streaming is kind of the, yeah. the back end. But also yeah. it'll get some awards maybe. Yeah. Uh, during the film festival. Exactly. That's a great exposure. Exactly. And I think that... You'll get those little laurels. Yeah, yeah. There's a laurel on it as as being a headlining <laughs> okay. movie right yeah. now for the one I'm tagging on Facebook. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's very cute. I saw a parody once that was like that. It it showed one of those laurels and said, "This is going to be a good movie." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, something like that. Better than mediocre. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it was it was kind of funny. Um, yeah. So it it sounds like we've we've talked about a lot. We. You mentioned, though, uh, being in other communities connected with um, being trans, uh, possibly the cross-testing community. Is that true? Were you... I mean, you, uh, when I was pre-hormones and everything, yeah. I was a cross-dresser, like, okay. you know, in my early Did, you, did I age. identify that way as a cross-dresser? Um, that's all I knew of the community, and that's okay. all that I knew felt good to me. Okay. Um, so, that, yeah, that okay. that's, was one of the phases of my growth. Okay. Because um, some people don't go through, like, the cross-dressing community. They come directly to more the trans transgender community. Right. Or uh, maybe through being part of the queer or or the LGBT community, the larger community. Yeah, I didn't have a community. All, uh, okay. all I knew about it was my internal feelings because I was sheltered by conservative okay. parents. Yes. So the only thing that I was allowed ever to explore was just my internal self. Sure. Um, yeah. I wasn't allowed to go to any pride events or travel right. to anything or right. really kind of... I didn't know that talking to therapists was an option either. Like, right. My parents so so brainwashed me into calling this the skeleton in my closet mm. that I could never ta- tell anyone or talk about. So they um, they knew. Yeah, they caught me yeah. numerous times cross-dressing mm. throughout my childhood and punished me every single time and said, you need to like not do this and wow. not tell anyone about this ever. It's amazing that they didn't, I mean, I, I don't don't mean to second guess your, your parents, but that they didn't refer you to a therapist or somebody they you know? did but they went along with me to make sure um that i was kind of approaching it from uh, um from the perspective of it being bad they okay. wanted it to stop and they wanted me to want it to, to stop but okay. i didn't want to stop oh. um so they went with me to make sure that i was saying what they wanted me to say to fix the problem basically they yeah to yeah. um yeah yeah that's they wanted to 
make it go away. Mm. Wow. Wow. How did you like break out of that? Because that's I went pretty, to college. That's pretty heavy. I went to college. Okay. And I, yeah. So that was enough of a break from your parents. That and... was yeah. When I hit when I hit college, I ordered hormones on the black market, which I do not recommend or condone in any way, yeah. shape, or form. But I don't regret doing it personally. Yeah. Um, well, I, it's I, a, I did. It's I started. A survival technique yeah, it for is some a survival people. technique. Yeah. Um, and I um, and I kept my dosage very low, and yeah. um, and I grew up my hair, and I joined the LGBT club, and. Um, started presenting as fem- feminine okay. like once i got away from them mm. then I, I just did everything so you just went wild i i, I, I wouldn't it. say wild but I, I will say kind of um i went where i wanted to go okay yeah um yeah yeah, yeah. so as yeah. soon as i had that freedom and that and and a dedicated address to send mail to yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. that's where i went um so i've met some older trans women who Like, once they transition, they do, uh, probably that's why I'm saying go wild, because they do kind of go wild a little bit. Right. Like, they kind of make up for lost time. Yeah, Yeah, okay, yeah. Did you do anything like that? Um, like missing out on yeah. Kind of so a I girl missed out on high school prom. Yeah, uh, obviously I I cried in my car because I couldn't wear a dress, um, mm. and I didn't end up going. Yeah. Um. And uh, so, uh, as a result of that, I have a substantial dress collection. Okay. Uh, I think that that, that kind of triggered this uh, <laughs> a, a, a crazy fascination sure. with beautiful ball gowns sure. and prom dresses okay. and things like that. So, I definitely have a substantial collection. How about shoes? Um, shoes are okay. They're uncomfortable. Okay. But they're okay. I, I have two band-aids on my feet right now from where I was bleeding from wearing heels the other day when the movie poster came out. I went out celebrating in, in heels. And both my ankles were bleeding by oh, the end of the no. night. So it's so just, it's more, hard to find heels that just like you're look more nice about, and feel nice. So you're but more about the gowns than you are about the I shoes. I am because yeah. you wear a nice, uh, uh, a big full ball gown. It doesn't matter what shoes you're wearing. Okay. Yeah. Um, but. Um, I used to be really into shoes because as a shorter kind of wider fellow, it's very difficult for me to find clothing that actually fits. Mm -hmm. I sometimes find vintage clothing that fits. And I can just imagine like some really short, portly Italian guy who went to his tailor and got like a specific shirt made, like that kind of thing. Whenever I find something like that, I immediately buy it. Or if I find uh, a brand that is like has shorter and wider clothing, like, and if I can afford it, I buy it. But that's why I, in the past, I focused on shoes, actually, and ties. Like the things Makes that... Makes sense. That, yeah, the, the things that I could find that either didn't need a size or, you know, wasn't a common size that I could get. Mm-hmm. Right. So I would get, like, I would go to thrift stores and I got really good at finding, like, the really beautiful old handmade um, shoes like from Italy nice. yeah stuff like that I don't have any of that stuff anymore um, I had a bunch of girlfriends who were also really into that and so they kind of inherited that stuff from me oh you know? yeah 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 whenever they liked it I was like okay well you can have it you know very giving but you know then I ended up with nothing so <laughs> whatever I'm an anarchist at heart so it's all right um, speaking of that um, and then lastly okay yeah. in 2020 I, um, since I was retiring and no longer needed to be in New England, yeah. especially for the harsh winter, sure. I bought a small house in uh, Florida. Oh, okay. And once my retirement started um, paying out, you mm-hmm. know, a pension. What, the, reason, what, what region of Florida? Uh, just northern Florida. I just okay. needed to be warm and near a sure. beach. That's all I needed. Sure, sure. Okay. Very low bar. But, okay. um, and uh, drove, my, drove my then camper down to that house and uh, just unloaded and lived there for the winter yeah. collecting a pension and, li- and going to the beach and that's how my 2020 ended yeah <laughs> so yeah. 2020 was an incredible year for me i could write a book on 2020 alone and so you were able to finally get your surgeries i'm i'm yeah i got two of the yeah. four surgeries mm-hmm. i wanted to get in 2020 sure. and then i no longer had that health insurance because i only I only picked up that health and in- that particular health insurance for calendar year 2020 okay um and uh, and that's that's a, a whole different thing. Other uh, so there was a else. time limit, and then yeah. Um, yeah. So it was Mass Health. Mm-hmm. So it was through the state of Massachusetts, yes. mm-hmm. and um, it was uh, like five hundred dollars a month out mm-hmm. of pocket to yeah. retain this that's hefty. this health insurance. Yeah. yeah, 
And so, yeah, initially I was crying because I was starting in January. I was paying five hundred dollars yeah, a month right. for this health insurance that I can no you, longer use. I could not wait, use. Wait, 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 wait. Yep, yeah. I'm hemorrhaging money, and I'm just like, I gotta get, figure out how I'm My gonna goodness. deal with the situation because yeah. I right. can't do anything. Yeah, I'm in a holding pattern, and I'm I'm leaking large hundreds of dollars. You right. know, large money. Yeah. Um, I understand. I I actually had to pay for literally everything cash. Yeah, I would I would have saved money if I'd paid for cash. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I thought I was going to save some money by picking up in health insurance and doing yeah. several surgeries, but yeah. it didn't work out that way. Oh, that's terrible. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, COVID messed up a lot of things for a lot of people. Yep. Yep, yep. Lots, yes, of, bus- lots of businesses folded. Yep. Uh, people's health concerns like you having surgery and then also sometimes even uh, cancer. Uh, people who needed to go into hospitals, they couldn't do that. Uh, they yeah. could, but just not bring friends. I think oh, Dana really? Farber okay. um, cut down on the number of people who uh, cancer patients could bring with them. They had mm. to wear masks and get tested and all that. Okay. But people who like chemotherapy was an emergency situation, okay. so the emergency situation still happened. Okay. Um, or emergency treatments and surgeries mm-hmm. still took place, but just very, very cautiously. I, I just heard that there was some things that were kind of deferred. Maybe it was more Potentially, like preventative yeah. care or screenings and that sort of thing. Maybe right, less kind of thing. less emergent situations. Yeah, because yeah, I definitely know someone who had chemotherapy during that time frame, mm. and it was very um, um, conservatively approached, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when I had chemotherapy, I had like a team of like six or eight or ten friends. Like, they give us a private room, and we yeah. were having a good time. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Well, um, with chemotherapy, what I'm understanding is it... it it lowers your immune system that too yeah, yeah. so so they don't would allow be very dangerous visitors yeah, yeah. exactly so yeah. you know you have to be very cautious yeah. um, even back in uh, 2014 when I was halfway through my chemotherapy mm. in early 2014 uh, I went out for my birthday and I got sick oh wow. yeah I was halfway through my chemotherapy and I'm like you know it's my birthday I'm going out with friends I, I, I tried to you know play it cautiously mm-hmm. wash my hands but masks weren't a thing at the time sure. so I got sick yeah yep yep yeah, um, oh, that's terrible. H- how do you deal with when you're taking ke- when you're on chemotherapy and getting sick? How how did you even deal with that? Were you able to take anything? Or? Um, you do your best with what you have for drugs um, okay. on hand. Mm. Um, um, usually, when I personally get a, a cold, it lasts twenty four hours. Um, this one lasted several days. Okay. Um, it was just a slower process to fight it off. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not, so not everyone is in that situation. It sounds like that was a right. real pivot in your life. It was. Uh, it wouldn't it be for anyone yeah. really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I changed my eating habits. I mm-hmm. changed my um, lifestyle a bit. Yeah. It really kicked me in the pants to you know go out and buy an RV. Mm-hmm. Um, it. Uh, had you been wanting to do that for? A yeah, while? I had because uh, I love the beaches here and sure. uh, the free parking. And I would just sit in my car and just like lounge and read and be like, you know what I need. I need a fridge and a queen size bed, <laughs> and so I started looking at different sure. setups for for uh, for campers. And you know, if you need a, a truck to haul it, or or yeah. you want to do a van, or you want to yeah. do like a class A self-contained sort yeah. of thing. And uh, eventually, I decided on a truck camper, which slides in the back of a bed of a oh, truck, yeah. like an F one fifty or F two fifty. And uh, so eventually, so a smaller one. Yes, yeah. a, a smaller mm-hmm. one. I'll show it to you when yeah. we when we're done here. Um, uh, that, so I can still like parallel park or have the truck serviced yes. and take it take it off and have yeah. the truck looked at and stuff yeah. like that and then reassemble it yeah. pretty easily. One person can do that with electric motors that the the truck camper has mm-hmm. to raise and lower and get the truck underneath and lower it back down right. and secure it. Um, and it's a fantastic little uh, little beast of a camper. Yeah. Um, I've seen all kinds of them too, like ones that look like those tour buses for rock groups, you know, yep. like those are just so giant. And then that's a class A RV it, typically. Oh. And I, I don't want, I don't want to drive a bus, but no, I'm I, thinking about upgrading my truck camper to like a class C, which is I, like a 20 footer. I, I wonder what it costs to even run those things. I mean, it must, they must just take gallons of fuel for mile yep. per mile or something. Yeah, uh, you get but, about 10 miles a gallon. You, you put gas into your generator. Yeah, there's yeah. all kinds of maintenance yeah. and stuff that go propane um, for cooking. Yep. But especially those big ones. I mean, and then they have trouble like even finding parking. They might have a driver. They might pay a driver. Oh, some of the it? tour bu- some okay. of the larger tour groups pay for a driver. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I've just seen retirees with these. Yeah, I've yeah. seen that as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But then also I see the ones like yours that are like uh, hunters or something and they have like a pop-up in the back. Yeah. Those are very cute. And then um, 
Also, the teardrop ones. The teardrops I, are cute. I yep. love the teardrops. The little, they're called little guys. They're so little. Yeah. I mean, even for me. A little I'm, aerodynamic thing you can haul behind a SUV or something. Yeah, even like me, I'm like, oh, that looks really small. I don't know if I could fit in that. They have a little TV and a little little yeah. bed in there. Yeah, it's and adorable. And sometimes they even have like a little boot, a little trunk in the back. Yeah, so usually yeah. they put their kitchen um, under a, a lift gate. Yes. And uh, and then you it's have like your sink hatchback. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. I just don't want to be outside when it's raining and I'm cooking. Yeah, That's yeah. unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, they're usually a, a little bit <laughs> uh, about the size of my car, which I have a really small car. So that would be funny to have like a little, little, you know, trailer behind my car. Yep. But they can be pulled by little cars. Absolutely. So I just didn't want to tow anything personally. So yeah. I wanted to, I have a photo of my truck with the camper on it parked into one parallel parking spot perfectly. Mm. And I was like, and this is how I, I just demonstrate to people that my queen bed plus galley plus dinette yeah. plus full size fridge and half bath yes. can be parked in a normal parking spot there you go so, yeah. yeah everything you everything you need Why i don't not? have to i don't if i'm towing something i don't have to yeah. figure out a place to yeah. you know park. and the things you don't need you can get elsewhere right yes Planet of course fitness whatever you know yep um so since since my podcast and my videos and, and my project are about uh trans people i have a few more questions about that um and also about politics and religion and that sort of thing. Um, so, are you? It sounds like you've been kind of on the more on the fringe of the uh, trans community a little bit more, from from the way you grew up and just how you live your lifestyle. Um, do you have many connections with uh, the queer community or the trans community? Is that a place where you uh, you know make friendships and have community basically? Um, nowadays it is. It is. I feel okay. a little more connected to it these days. Mm -hmm. um, I have marched in the Boston Pride Parade at least four times oh, okay. on different floats and with yeah. different friends. Sometimes with my cosplayer friends who sure. are all there in rainbow gear um, and their cosplays and stuff like that. Mm. Um, so I've marched with them in cosplay. I've also been, especially during my chemotherapy, one of my friends invited me to um, stand on her float with her. Mm. Um, so I did that a couple of years as well. Um, and um, yeah, so I, I feel welcomed into, yeah. especially in the Boston uh, LGBT yeah. community, mm -hmm. um, um, because it is so vast yes. in, the, in the Boston area. Right. Um, the Portsmouth area, where we're currently located, has started doing a Portsmouth Pride as of the last five years. Yeah. So that, that's a pretty fresh sort of movement. Sure. In fact, the first year they didn't have the didn't even have the permitting uh, squared away. We mm. marched on the sidewalks. Sure. That was our that was our parade. Sure. Uh, because we couldn't we couldn't march in the streets. Yeah, and um, the streets here are really small. The streets like, are small. Yeah. The sidewalks are smaller. Yes. Uh, so there's it's a like, lot of us trying to yeah. yeah. And when I was joking earlier about uh, imagining taking a you know a horse or something like that's true. It's like just it's quintessential New England. Yeah, yeah it's little it really horse is. lanes, and they're going like this. They're definitely not made for for cars. Yeah, you know, they're like half the half the uh, small cities, uh, coastal cities around here have cobblestone roads yeah. still. Yeah, yep. They're so charming though. I yep. love them. You know, having spent most of my life, uh, my adult life, on the West Coast, where everything is pre pretty much new. Yeah, like all this kind of infrastructure is very new. You know, to come here and see all that stuff and all the little placards that say 17 whatever on them or yeah. you know 1600 something you know i i'm always fascinated by it you know somebody who's grown up here you're probably like okay whatever i didn't grow up here okay but if you've been here for a long time yeah. you're probably like okay another old building but me i'm like oh my goodness look at this you yeah, know? yeah um, it's so cute. also a tangent on lgbt community sure. is uh when i when I bought the house in Florida, my base expectation was to be mm -hmm. warm in the winter and go to the beach occasionally. Yeah. Um, because it was still during a pandemic, as you remember. Yeah. Um, and so I did not want to really kind of interact with people because mm -hmm. I knew that they were very lax yes. in both their educational requirements and their protocols for COVID. In Florida, um, specifically. In Florida, yeah. specifically mm -hmm. in Florida. Um, it has a reputation. but. Yeah. Thankfully, when I got down there, I did not encounter that. When okay. I got to uh, I, Jacksonville is where, yeah. I, where I chose to live. So the, on the Atlantic coast. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yep, mm -hmm. still on the same coast yeah. as, as here. Um, and uh, when I got down there, the larger cities are actually very um, pretty moderate. Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah. the state itself is red, but that's mostly the areas in between the cities. Yes. The cities themselves are actually quite 
lean blue, yeah, essentially. And, and they have a big population. They have a big population. And it's a big state. And yeah. uh, they actually have an LGBT community. Yeah. In each of those, and uh, and I felt welcome there as well. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. You know, I I think I marched because I didn't know anyone. So what I did is I went to the 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 pride that was happening when I got down there, and I just I spoke to the as the um, floats uh, the groups and the floats were lining up for the parade. Mm. I just kind of wandered through and introduced myself. Sure. And eventually, one of them said, "Hey, do you want to march? Do you want to march with us?" And that's you, how I. You are very outgoing. I, yes, I try. I, I, I've been to <laughs> I've been to pride parades since I was seventeen, like yeah. nineteen eighty seven. So. That's I can't. Be, that's okay. I can't yeah. imagine just walking in, being like, "Hi," and then going, "Hi, I'm new here." Yeah, and going on some float. So you, you're like the opposite. Of me. <laughs> well, oh, I have, I have, I have. I'm, I'm pretty well balanced between being an introvert and being an extrovert. Okay. So, um, in that case, I, I well, wanted to make a lot is, of friends fast. So your ba- balance is probably different than mine. Perhaps. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I mean, yeah. So I, I, yeah, I had to learn. Do you, uh, do you have any siblings? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm an only child, so okay. I had to I had to learn different ways of making friends quickly because sure. we were constantly relocating, and it was sure. I didn't have any friends. Yeah, a um, lot of a lot of uh, people that I know who were um, single children in a family, they often interacted with adults a lot when they were kids. Did you find that the case? Like, uh, I mean, yeah, I had yeah. my fair share. Yeah. I, every military base we moved to. I was born on Andrews Air Force Base, and we were mm. there for half a year. So that's the exception because I don't remember that. Yeah. But every military base that we lived on after that point uh, was mostly interacting with my parents' friends because yeah. they were right. also uh, stationed at these yeah. places. And yeah. um, occasionally they had children, and, yeah. and I would know their children or get to know their children. But it was a very, very... Um, abbreviated sort yes. of community. Yeah. Um, and that could just be for like a few months or something. Yeah, it's usually a, yeah. a couple of years yeah. is usually how long we're stationed in mm. one spot mm. uh, as military uh, families. Yeah. Go. So it's almost like you, you're you in this compound and you only have so many kids there. So you, Yeah, there's yeah. enough for a small school, yeah. but that's, that's pretty much it. Who, who are you going to choose as your friends? That's going to be difficult, you know? Yep. Yeah, yeah. very, and you don't know how long they're going to stick around. Like, yeah. 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 Next well, year, it might be a totally different group of kids. Wow. Well, <laughs> so. Yeah. So it, it sounds like you have to be really, um, be able to adapt really well and quickly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So that's probably a skill I think that you've probably carried along with you. Perhaps. Yes. Yeah. It's a, it's in my, uh, my survival skills set, yes. I suppose. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so once again, so, uh, I was wondering, what is your kind of political outlook? What is your political philosophy? Because I'm talking a lot of, I'm talking to a lot of trans people about their political ideas because we're, we're kind of in the news right now, right? right? Trans people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, I was raised quite conservative. Yes, you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I am not conservative. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am before pre Donald Trump, I yeah. was pretty moderate. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, there were, you mean like moderate Republican? Uh, no, I would say kind of independent. Okay. Um, I really don't like the Republican sort of word and and what it and what it comes with for sure. baggage. Um, yeah, there's a whole lot of baggage, definitely. Um, so I I, I tended to to kind of be independent. Mm-hmm. Um, financially, I was pretty conservative. Um, making financial decisions. Yeah, you mentioned uh, taxation earlier. Yeah, and states. Um, mm-hmm. but as far as human rights go, and um, how I felt I should be treated mm-hmm. as a, as a transgender person, yeah. or how I was treated by my parents. Yeah. Um, those many years, I, I felt was wrong. Yeah. And. So there was there was something there that I couldn't quite put my finger on at the time as a youth, and um, I think I typically voted blue, mm-hmm. uh, but then Donald Trump came along and I definitely um, went far left. 
Okay. Yep, as a result. Um, and when you say far left, do you mean like the DSA or Bernie Sanders? Yeah, Bernie Sanders. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my intellectual friends and myself were uh, were pro pro Bernie. That was yeah. our, that was our guy. Yeah. He still is. Yeah, I really love it how the D. I'm I'm not part of the DSA, and actually I'm more on the libertarian side than I am on the authoritarian side. When you look at the political right. compass. And um, socialists tend to be on the more authoritarian side, like they want state solutions, that sort of thing, rather right. than non-state solutions. I'm more mutualist, I'm more voluntarist, but um, I certainly appreciate how the DSA and Bernie and all those folks always bring up justice issues. Right. Like they're so strong on it. And I wish that the other parties... I got a selfie with Bernie at... Um, oh, really? Yeah, at uh, Concord Pride here in New Hampshire oh, nice. in 2019. Yeah, for as, grump yeah. as grumpy as he looks, he's also seems he's, like... He's a fantastic guy. Yeah, he seems yeah. really personable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. yeah, I walked up to him and I was like, may I have a selfie with you, sir? Awesome. And he was like, absolutely. Yeah. And so, yeah, I got a selfie with Bernie Sanders at, uh, and marched with kind of... Um, whenever I see a pride parade yeah. in these recent years, I've just like jumped in and, oh, and marched yeah. no matter if I'm okay. with a group or not. Sure, sure. So I, I was off on my own doing you're, my own pride you're flag. You're a bit of an anarchist or something. Yeah. Maybe oh, yeah. not, maybe not politically, but you just do it anyway. Yeah. Uh, awesome. As an engineer, I'm always asking myself, what can I get away with? Yeah. Okay. And that's, that's how I live my life. Where's the tolerance? <laughs> um, yeah. I, I mean, that I, yeah. is the engineering. Yeah. Yeah. Aspect. Yeah. Where, where, um, where am I going to meet resistance yes. here? Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I get, a, I get away with a lot of things. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's very true. Um, <laughs> and, um, you probably get away with more than most people. <laughs> Perhaps, yes. perhaps, yeah. As an engineer, yeah, it I can kind of. It helps to be, you know, like a model, and you know. Yeah, it helps to be a model and yes. constantly an analyzing an entire situation. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, as an engineer, yeah, yeah it definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah. If you walk in like you own the place, then no one's going to question you. Really, sure. that's it. It's all about confidence, yeah. looking the part, and uh, also knowing exactly what's going on. Sure, yeah. sure, yeah. sure. Uh, it's good you to the... be able to read people and. You know, if you're nervous, not to show your nervousness. And, yeah, you know, oh yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah, all, all about confidence. Yeah, Many yeah. situations. 80% of the situations we encounter are all about yeah. how you carry yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I used to be at, at Harvard at, at the Divinity School there, and uh, I was sometimes nervous. And I swear, some of these uh, security guards would come up to me and ask me, like, what I was doing in the building. And I was like, ah please, you know, okay, here's my ID, you know. I have a clipboard. What are you asking me questions <laughs> I for? I know. <laughs> like, I would want to subject myself to this, you know, this torture. But anyway, um, I was going to say, I, I'm so appreciative, appreciative um, of how the DSA brings up justice issues. You know, they're so strong about it. You know, people who are on the socialist side, they're, they're quite strong about it. And I wish that the bigger parties would do that, right? Because it, it seems like there, there's this huge lag Right of the Democrats not really picking up on what they need to support, uh, you know, among among people, um, and then of course the Republicans are doing things that are just downright bad. You yeah, know? Um, I mean they're making things illegal. They're vicious. They're vicious. Yeah, yeah they they are they're vicious um, and malicious in their yeah. approach, um, and um, I think they um, are short-sighted. Yeah. And um, do not um, take into account um, how what people need yeah. and how they feel. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, that's that's kind of how I've uh, what I've noticed. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Myself, I I would love to support them in terms of some of their economic. Uh, conservatism, sure, but there is no way I'm going to vote for a Republican right now, right? Because I mean, they're they're pretty extreme. They're they are extreme. Yeah, they are definitely extreme. They're taking away people's human rights, rights to health care. They're going after parents. I mean, they're denying health care coverage at the state level. Yeah, I mean, they're de they're detracting. Don't get me started on bathroom rights. Oh, over please, here. please talk about it. Please <laughs> talk about it. I mean, I. Mean, I I, I acknowledge my privilege that I am an attractive trans woman that I pass pretty well. Yes. That mm -hmm. uh, in my time spent in Florida, I haven't even been misgendered. Yeah. Right. Um, so I, I acknowledge that privilege. Um, but at the same time, I, I don't think 
I, I have family members that are like, oh, I support you, but I don't support the bathroom bill. Mm. And I'm just like, that yeah. is me. That's like, a, that is me. And that's a, just, it's a basic function. I mean, where right. are you supposed to go? Yeah, cause, because Republicans kind of invent these ridiculous scenarios. Yeah. And whenever I, I see a Republican kind of talking about, you know, if we have men in the ladies room, they're going to just spy on the ladies. And I'm mm. like, are you saying that that's what you're going to do? Right. Because right. that's not what I'm doing. Right. When I go in there, right. I just, I have to pee. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And I'm going in there. I'm going to use the bathroom. I'm going to get out. Right. Because uh, I don't really want to socialize in a bathroom, honestly. Uh, no. So I, I think it speaks more about kind of Republican... Yeah. malicious tendencies yeah. than it what does really what they're obsessed with yeah they seem more obsessed with that than anybody right yeah and who are the perpetrators of that stuff usually yep. cisgendered straight right. usually uh, a lot of priests you know conservative people I mean there's so many um, uh, instances of conservative um, Republicans getting caught in airport bathrooms soliciting guys for sex right you know and so you know, and, yeah, then, and uh, then the next day they'll vote against some uh, gay marriage or something. Right. You know, um, because they're afraid of backlash. Um, yeah. And uh, I think I, I wish that more Republicans kind of stood up for what they actually believed in. And, you know, um, than being afraid of backlash or maybe just leaving people alone, because what they what they're doing right now is really aggressive. Right. It yeah. takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of resources to pass these laws that are taking away people's rights. Right. I mean, that's not some passive thing. Now, I, you know, who's passive is the Democrats. Unfortunately, yeah. yes. I feel they like, are not as malicious in yeah. their approach as Republicans can be very mean. Yeah. Um, Which is good. It's good that they're not malicious, but they need to. But they need to rise to yes. a, a same level of. I don't want to use the word aggression, but I yeah. want to use the word. Like strength or something. Yeah, strength or, is yeah. a good word. Just mm -hmm. kind of the same measure of yeah. um, um, words, chemo brain. Um, That's okay. The same sort of measure of uh, passion. Yeah. Um, yeah. When it comes to the hu humanity side, the human rights yeah. side of yeah. of, uh, of society and yeah. laws. I agree. I, um, I feel like they just kind of trail along a little behind bit. The, the, the Republicans. Yeah. And, and that and doesn't do anything. I've been impressed by AOC mm. um, and uh, and Bernie because yeah. they are they are aggressive, yeah, you know, in are. there and they're like they calling are. people out specifically saying, mm -hmm. you know, this is what we need. Yeah. This is why. Yeah. And, you know, tell me exactly why you oppose this and why do you feel this way? You know yeah. what I'm saying? And they go right up into their, the faces of the Republicans and ask those hard questions. Yeah. I wonder if she's had some mentorship to do that. Yeah. Because it seems like she's impressive. Bernie has kind of had a career of right. doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't, you know, really agree with some of um, uh, her politics, but. I appreciate that she that she does. She stands work. up. Yeah, she stands yeah. up for herself. She stands up for a leftist point of view in a you know a Congress that is more right leaning. Even the Democrats are, are more right leaning. They're you know they're centrist, but they tend to just follow, like I said, follow along with what the Republicans are doing. They don't push back enough. Right. You know, we really don't have a real strong left here yet. So you leftists out there. You, especially you libertarian leftists who I know are doing good work in your communities, you got to get into politics too because we need you out there. We need you. you know? For sure. Yeah. yeah. And one, one thing that gives me hope for the future is the fact that every generation is a little more progressive than the previous. And that, that trend hopefully will carry a, a bit into the future. It I may take so. a little time, but I, I'm, I'm fairly confident that we will see in in our lifetime some some positive change i hope so but you know if you look at history you see that there's a lot of cycles there are a lot of cycles you know i mean per, feeling that there is a progress is a very hopeful that's very hopeful it is hopeful but and as an e engineer yeah. i i am very science-based and yeah. results-based yeah um, um see i'm more i'm a little bit more pessimistic yeah uh, partly because 
I mean, I'm right in it. I've done so much activism that I see, like I've just been in the face of people just who wanted to kill me, basically. Right. <laughs> you know, and they're still out there. And, you know, these uh, so-called gender critical feminists and the TERFs and stuff, those are people I came out with in the 80s. Mm -hmm. You know, those same people, the same rhetoric, and some of that rhetoric came out of the lesbian community as well. You know, yeah. so I, I really wish that some older lesbians would come out who, who, who support trans people and push back against that kind of feminism that's coming up that is hurting people. Right. Right. I, it'd be nice. Yeah, it'd be real nice. Um, be more active, be more yeah. vocal, you know. Um, but I, uh, coming from the background that I have. Yeah, um, the military. Highly, no, highly, sur uh, uh, highly, um. Um, independent, okay, yeah, self-surviving, yes. sort of mentality. Mm -hmm. um, I'm perfectly fine just getting in my camper and going into the woods and just doing my own thing. Sure, you know, regardless of if they make trans illegal tomorrow and they go out trying to execute all the trans people, uh, then I'm in my camper. I'm in the woods. You're never going to find me again. I see. So yeah. yeah, it's a very much a survivalist mentality. Yeah, and yeah. that's that's kind of how, that's how I dealt with my childhood with my being outnumbered sure. in, in my household right. and uh and that's that's just a characteristic i'd carry with myself yeah as well i so. understand i i also had sort of a childhood that was kind of isolating and part of that had to do with moving a lot which is similar to you yep. moving a lot um and also moving to small places and then um religion was also a factor in there that was sort of isolating and when you do that and you survive that you keep those survival um, tactics with you. Yeah. You keep you keep them. You know. Uh, so I'm constantly thinking about you know, okay, putting up food. You know, I mean, here I am in this place with all this food, but still I have that drilled into me that oh, I need to make sure that I have a little bit of something that I don't mention to anybody, and I don't even acknowledge to myself, but it's tucked down in my trunk or whatever, you know? Yeah. Just, I mean, just funny things like that, or I'm... Like, a, a shelf in my storage unit here in Portsmouth is non-perishables. Yeah. I'm yeah, ready. there you go. I'm ready. There you go. Yep. Yeah, actually, one of the first people that I um, interviewed for this project describes herself as a prepper, and she lives on some land in Arkansas, nice. and yeah, she, you know, has animals, and she raises uh, crops and stuff like that. So All she, necessary skills for yeah. like an apocalyptic yep. situation, absolutely. And she's doing it. Yeah. She's doing it. Survivalist. Yeah, in rural Arkansas. Yep. So, uh, you know, and you can go up to rural Maine. We can all do it. I was living in a cabin in... in uh, Outside of Fairbanks, Alaska, I, I, I am <laughs> I know? am an engineer, so I, I do appreciate technology. So okay. my yeah. off my survival cabin in the woods, if you will, would sure. have TVs and surround sound yeah. and well, a substantial you'd movie calorie. You uh, probably have calorie. those big uh, battery banks with the absolutely. Yeah. I, I do on my camper. I designed yeah. the solar solar system on my camper. You could help other people design their systems. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. <laughs> or how to get you know. Uh, electricity from putting a little uh, generator in the water or something, you know. Yeah, I, I, yeah. we can design a uh, yeah, yeah a little yeah. thing like that. That yeah. could be your next business. I don't, I don't think it's gonna be my next <laughs> no. business. I don't. I don't want to get back in engineering. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, acting sounds good too. Yeah, right? acting sounds good. Do you have more plans for that? Not yet. You, not going on. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for this movie to come out so I okay. can get an acting reel. Okay. Because I was promised an acting reel from the producers. Okay. And um, they were uh, every time I ask them to help, kind of put one together. They're like, the movie hasn't been released yet. We can't give you the footage. And I'm just I like, see. I see. Okay. Yeah. So I'm waiting for a movie to come out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That post-production stuff is really, it takes a while. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's been done for a year and yeah. they're just like trying to get it out to film studios and yeah. I'm waiting for them to wait to get to film studios yeah. so that I can, I can submit an acting reel to, you know, transgender talent agencies. Right. Right. You could have so an agent and everything. Yeah, I could. Yeah. But I don't have any footage, so. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if uh, photos would just work now. No, no, not for acting. You no. need to see a range of em emotion. I see. That's uh, I see. the key in an I acting see. situation. Well, you're very animated, so Thank that's you. good. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, hopefully that translates well. Yeah. Um, yeah online. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. So the other... The other aspect that I talk about is religion. Has that been important to you at all, or are you no. agnostic or atheist, or, um, or just you just don't think about it? Um, I was raised very Christian. Okay. Um, what denomination? I don't know, Protestant or something. Protestant. I don't, okay. I don't even know. Just generally Protestant. Yeah, okay. sure. Uh, my mom teaches Sunday school. She goes to church 
three to four times a week. Okay. Um, so she's very involved. very into it. She's from Florida, big big Christian family. Um, mm. I don't know what my dad saw in her because he's not Christian or religious. Okay. Um, so does your family more follow your dad's um, ideas about it or? No, he's okay. he's kind of. I don't know, he's kind of agnostic, I guess, but he kind of goes along with the flow because she is so active in okay. the church. Um, I came out to my mom as an atheist uh, mm. in high school, and she wept. Um, but I am person... What spurred that? What's What spurred that? Uh, just general disagreement. Like, my, my mom has never been very supportive of the transition. Sure. Um, I don't think she's ever used a female pronoun when referring to me at all. Ever. Really? Ever. Even at this point? Even at this point. Wow. Um, and, and, yeah. Because um, you're fairly new, but you're, I would say, well along. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. well along. I've taken yeah. female hormones for over 20 years. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. I mean, college was 20 years ago. Okay. Like, I'm older than I look. Okay. Um, sure. <laughs> um, and, um, yeah, so uh, they have never been supportive in any way, shape, or form. Mm. Uh, staunchly opposed to anything feminine sure. coming from my direction. Um, and um, they constantly dead name me and, and mm. use uh, male pronouns and stuff like that. Wow. And um, during my chemotherapy, I um, because I was being stripped of my feminine characteristics that I strove sure. to maintain hair, hair yeah. eyebrows, mm -hmm. um, etc. And who wants to put on makeup and right? Yeah, uh, I chose to wear um, elegant ball gowns, the ball gowns that I had collected as a prom enthusiast, I guess you could call it, uh, from my collection of beautiful gowns. Sure. And I so I wore a different gown to each of my chemotherapies. Oh my goodness. As long as they had access you, to, to you my... You really are a performer. I am. Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> um, and uh, so my parents came to my first chemotherapy. Sure. And... And... Um, <laughs> and because they're so staunchly opposed to sure. mm. feminine... Uh, presentation by with their by gown. their only son with your ball gown taking chemotherapy in <laughs> and um, they said that you did it to upset us oh no and uh, my my Facebook status that day was like wow I didn't know my chemotherapy was about you yeah really. my apologies really uh, yeah, yeah so uh, here you are in the hospital getting yeah this t terrible treatment the, yeah oh my god and wow. um, uh, so wow. yeah I I, I before that moment, that, that was another uh, a pivotal moment. Mm. That the whole chemotherapy was very pivotal in my life. Yeah. Do you need to wait for the plane? We have a uh, military plane, sounds like. Uh, Pease Trade Port. What is it? It's an active airport. Oh, okay. Looks, it, it's gray. It looks like a military plane. Yeah, it's probably DOD. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so um, they they said you did that because you knew it would upset us, mm. and that's the reason you did it. That's why. And um, and it was up until that point, I kind of was still under kind of a brainwashing sort of mm. situation, and I was kind of always defending them to mm. my friends. My friends were like, "What you're, what they're doing to you is not yeah, cool." You know right. what I'm saying? And I'm like, "They're old fashioned." You know, I'm mm. trying I'm trying to reach them and trying to um, educate them sure. on the GL LGBT transgender stuff. And I, I'm making headway, but it's slow progress. Yeah. So you know, give it time. They're old fashioned. My, um, yeah. So I always defended them, and then. And then the chemotherapy thing mm. happened, and I saw that as such an egregious violation yes. of familial trust yes. that I was just like, yeah, I'm no longer yes. defending you. There's no reason. Yeah. What you've done is an unforgivable sort of thing. Yes. Um, your conduct during my chemotherapy, um, when I just wanted to feel, express yes. myself through through um, through right. a, a beautiful dress yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Um, and to feel loved by your parents. And you played the victim when yeah. I when I needed you to support me instead. Yeah. And yeah. that is a that is an unforgivable violation. Yeah. And as a result, uh, we no longer speak. Wow. As a result of that yeah. situation. Yeah. So yep. Yeah. I yep. Yep. I will not speak to them. That's an appropriate break.
Yeah. Have they have they tried to contact you since then? Um, they have a couple times. Yeah. Um, during my chemotherapy, when I called out my dad in that Facebook post, he mm. blocked me on Facebook. Oh wow. He blocked his only child during their chemotherapy Jeez. on Facebook. Wow. And um, so at that point, I just I, I knew they what were beyond str- saving. What a strong man, you know. <laughs> sure. Whatever helps him sleep at night. Um, yeah. So a- after that point, I no longer send them Father's Day, Mother's Day mm. things. I don't send them anything for Christmas. I don't talk to them on the phone. I don't reach out to them. Mm. Um, I just call, I cut them off completely, which yeah. is easy because my mom doesn't use computers. So that yeah. was easy. Yeah. Um, but um, but a couple years later, uh, I, um, I sent my dad a photo of my camper. Mm. Um, mm. And I was just like, you know, I'm, I'm out traveling. Uh, if you're interested in knowing about my life and he's like where can I follow your adventures and I was like on Facebook and so I had to talk him through the process of unblocking me oh yes right and this was like 2016 Mm -hmm. like November of 2016 and um, so when he unblocked me and he sent me a friend request which I hesitantly approved (laughs) my feed was 50% Patriots for Trump Oh, Bullsh- no. Bullsh- crap. Yeah. And... Well, you can also unfollow him, you know. I commented on every single one of them. Oh, no. Dad, you are better than this. You're, you're the person who taught me about tolerating other people and sure. being a good person. And, so you really and went, treating others nicely. So you really went for it. So I, I absolutely went for it. Because yeah. he is... He, he, he can do better. He yeah. should do better. Yeah. Um, and I... I and. I think that lasted a day and a half before he blocked me again. <laughs> and at that point, I just gave up. I'm just sure. like, you guys are beyond saving. I'm not wasting any more sure. of my mental effort on either of you. Yeah, yeah. Good day, yeah. sir. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that's... That's, uh, a, that's a good The doctor. injured plane that had a crash landing into the side of a mountain, that is the, the relationship I've had with my parents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it sounds like an appropriate boundary. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like they need to grow up a little bit. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. At some point, uh, if you've surpassed the maturity of your parents, that's a difficult situation. Yeah. Uh, I had to somewhat take care of my parents as well, and that's not great. Yeah. Through, through their divorce. No. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. Anyway, I be, I became a state a ward of the state, which uh, is its whole other thing too. Yeah. So I also don't have um, contact with my parents. Uh, for me, it was probably a little bit harder because I started out younger, so I didn't have any I didn't have any support at all, no money, no nothing, and it was I was in halfway houses, and it was really pretty rough. Um, but even with that, if you are still connected with your parents who are, I would say, somewhat abusive to you, I mean, yep. that doesn't sound any better, really. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah, it's it can be rough. Definitely can be rough out yeah, there. Yeah, and I mean, our our stories aren't aren't necessarily unique. We, yeah. we, a lot of trans people yep. encounter these sort of situations with their parents, unfortunately. That's right. And a lot of it is due to the rhetoric. And like I, yeah. like I mentioned before, I've had family members say, I support you, but I don't support the bathroom bill. Right. Because of, and she, she regurgitated a situation right. that a Republican right. was touting. And I'm right. like, that doesn't happen. That's not a thing that right. happens. And, you know, a lot, of will, a lot of them will say, oh, I have nothing against trans people. But then they describe like what being trans is about or some idea like you're saying of of you know erroneous idea of what they say trans people are and so it's like well you don't actually not mind trans people you are aggressively going after them and believing propaganda that's against trans people and you're, right. you're unwilling to educate yourselves you know you're unwilling to look at your daughter or your son and see who they are and right. to maintain a good relationship with them you know, it's uh, so when people say that, it always means that they're going to say something bad after that. It's kind of like when people say, oh, I I'm don't. I'm not a racist, yeah, but. Exactly. That's exactly what I was going to oh, say. Man. It's always like that. It's yeah. always like that. Anyway, I think this is a pretty good spot to, to probably end. Um, and uh, is there anything else you would like to say, uh, possibly to other trans people about. You know the process, yeah. <laughs> you're you're very tolerant. 
she's been very tolerant today of my dog and all these bugs and stuff. But we're in a nice little garden behind a, a library here, but it's it's a little bit wild back there. Um, yeah, do you, do you have anything else you'd like to say uh, maybe to other trans women who maybe want to get into modeling or or acting or any of the things that you've done? Uh, you have quite, you've yeah. had quite a career. I, I have had quite yeah. a, a litany of experiences. Yeah. Um, whatever you do, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, back to not being perfect, yeah. But give it your all, you know, sure. and even if it turns out kind of not great, you know, enjoy the experience yeah. and grow from it. Yeah. 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 And failure is part of it. Yeah. Failure is totally an option. Um, don't do it to fail, but do it to gain experience. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the um, politi- I've, I've met a few politicians that are early in their careers and they always say, yeah, you're just going to lose the first time you go out, you know, because you you just don't have the experience with the, the press and how to advertise yourself and what you stand for and you haven't met enough people so you know sometimes sometimes failure is just a step to to something else you know something better yep yeah yep yeah that's true i don't know or you can go out and wave your hands weird and call the press liars and cheaters and and you know and and then and then you'll win yeah well (laughs) there's that as well i've noticed that also as a um an activist sometimes you strive for something that doesn't quite match what you wanted to happen. Like for instance, I tried to save a tree on the Harvard Divinity School campus. Mm -hmm. I've, I've done, I've done a whole bunch of other things. And sometimes you don't, you don't get what you want in that particular situation, but the situation around it is sometimes better. Like people understand the issue or maybe next time they'll be less likely to cut down an important tree or, um, you know, maybe just their contact with you, they notice your humanity more, Mm. you know, even if you don't win, sometimes you win in the bigger picture. I think sometimes you're a winner in here. Yeah. 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 I'm so glad that you're getting into movies. It sounds like a perfect thing. It's, it's, I'm really looking forward to to doing more with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a great way to increase exposure to these uh transgender sort of um issues yeah, and uh right. and lives and life experiences yeah i think that uh, knockout blonde is going to be um an excellent film yeah. that touches on not only her experiences but taps in some of my own as well and yeah. I, I look forward to uh to kind of bringing that to the and there's the stage. also the possibility you could go into uh roles that are uh cisgendered characters potentially yeah, yeah. i could play play a, a, a card from their own yeah. their own library and yeah, uh, yeah. or sci-fi and stuff because you've done oh, yeah. this, i love sci-fi yeah, yeah. that would be great stuff. yeah Sci- mean, sci-fi knows no gender i mean yeah. that's that's pretty ungendered yeah, yeah, yeah. um as far back from like um star trek and all yeah. those tv shows that that yeah. really concentrated on um issues social issues yeah. rather than Right. Human characteristics. Yeah, and speaking of that, you know, uh, unfortunately, uh, Nichelle Nichols recently passed. That is true, which is, as well. Yep. You know, I mean, she was quite an icon. She was a trailblazer. Definitely. In her own right, Definitely. absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And what an, an, accomplished, an accomplished dancer and singer and, you know. I met her a couple times at really? Comic-Cons. Yep. Oh, my. In passing. Really? Like, not formally, wow. just like we were in the sure. elevator together with her handlers sure. and stuff like that. But just sure. like like casually in passing yeah um yeah yeah cool yeah wow. yeah yeah <laughs> yep all right well thank you so much for meeting with me you i mean you're ter- you're you're tremendously busy so it's I'm true just, yeah, yeah yeah i'm i'm so excited and also we had some fiddling that we had to do today and yeah so thank you for not giving up <laughs> Sometimes I've given up too. I'm like, oh. You get frustrated yeah. and give up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a lot to get these um, meetings, you know, coordinated. Um, so I, I just appreciate that you made it real easy on me. Anyway. Yep. So, yeah. Of course. Thank you so much. Of course. Yeah. 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 My pleasure. Good luck. Good luck with your um, uh, acting career. I, I have a feeling. I have a feeling about that. I, I, I would like to for it to go places. Yes. I don't need it to, but I would like it to. Yeah. And um, I, I think there there's a definitely a possibility of uh, a future role. I for think sure. so. I think so. so yeah. You have an IMBD page. I mean, yep. gee. <laughs> Internet Movie Database yeah, page. Yeah, pretty cool. Yep. Pretty cool. All right. 
till next time, y'all. I'm going to be up in Maine, which is just across the river, apparently. Yep. You're um, pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. So you're just up in the New Hampshire, uh, Maine area for the for this weekend. And, and when, when, where are you going after that? Um, I'm going back to Boston. Uh, I, I have a few interviews there. And then possibly back to the New, New Jersey, New York area. And then I'm moving off to uh, Ohio. When are you going to be in New York? I'm not going to be in New York uh, City. That's just way too much for right, me. Right, right, yeah, same, but yeah. Uh, but I'm going to be in Corning at some point. Okay, so uh, is that upstate? I'm doing I'm doing an event, I think it's a like Comic-Con my, event in upstate New York in Saratoga Springs in November. And I, then I, like I said, the movie's coming out at the end of next month in Long Island. I know it's upstate because it's, okay. it's not anywhere near the, the city. city. Yeah, yeah it's, it's further up, but uh, and it's further west. And then also there's a couple people by Buffalo as well. So oh wow, it's a ways it's, out yeah, there. Yeah, okay. it's kind of a it's kind of a. You really do need an RV. Yeah, <laughs> no, because it costs too much to 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 run. Actually, my little car is just great. It's uh, it's the issue is I am in my early fifties and uh, you know sleeping in a car is not great. <laughs> yep. Yeah, especially with. Uh, you know, a small, large dog, you know, yep. a, a, a 65 pound dog, but he's a trooper and I'm a trooper. And, you know, I don't mind if I look a little saggy eyed, that's okay. That just gives me character. <laughs> something, sure. some, something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Cut. <laughs> All right. Let's take a selfie. Then I can post to social media. Here okay. Real quick. How do you want to do it? I don't know. Just right this. up the table. Looks, okay. looks fine. <laughs> That's cute. There we go. I look like a mountain man. You do, kind of, but...